request Mr. Kieran McBrien, Regional Director, EMA of Novris Limited Ireland, to come on and speak and share his vision. Just to give a brief uh, introduction to him, Mr. McBrien is based in Germany. He's a Regional Director for EMEA region for Novris Island, the company which has revolutionized the airborne infection control with world's most advanced plasma-based infection control technology. He has completed MD in marketing from Ulster University, an entrepreneur to the core. Kyron is a dynamic, passionate, and creative businessman who has acted in various capacities, including CEO of a couple of companies. It is his second visit to India in a span of two weeks on an invitation of Trivector Biomed, his exclusive Indian partner for Novris products. We welcome you, sir. Please. So thank you once again. As uh, my colleague just said, this is my second time in India, but it's my first time in the most important part of India. It's my first time in, in, in Calcutta. Um, the gentleman said earlier um, where Calcutta leads, the rest of India follows. I, I don't know if that's true. Uh, I hope it's true. I'm sure it's true. Uh, oh, he said used to be. OK, fair enough. Um, anyway, it's my first time here in your wonderful city. I'm very pleased to be here. And, and thank you for the welcome. Um, I hope I'm going to say some things that you find interesting. When making a presentation or a speech, I always try to follow the, the advice that Lady Churchill once gave to Winston Churchill before he made a speech in the House of Commons. She said to him, when he asked her advice, Winston, she said, for a speech to be immortal, it does not have to be eternal. So I'll try and keep to that motto today and not make this an eternal presentation. I will go quickly and rapidly because I know that I'm faced with a room of very intelligent people who will be able to read what's on my slides much quicker than I'll be able to say it. So airborne infection control. Our vision is that clearly hospital infections, infections inquired in hospitals is a massive issue across the entire world. Um, not only in India, but, but in, let me give you one, one very frightening statistic to take a country a, a long way away from here. In the Federal Republic of Germany, uh, there's a lot of focus on reducing traffic accidents. Traffic accidents in Germany kill around 4,000 people every year, which is clearly 4,000 people too many and a lot of money and investment is put into road safety to bring this number down. The number of people in that country who die from nosocomial or hospital-acquired infections is, depending on who you believe, somewhere between 30 and 40,000. So approximately 10 times the number of people who die in, in road traffic accidents. So that is a scandalous, a very, very high number and I sometimes wonder what people are really doing about it, um, but that's a, a perhaps a discussion for another day. So clearly the point is it's a very serious problem and we need to be doing more about it. And in our view, to start off by being controversial, in my view, it's not enough to keep on doing what we've been doing for 150 years or in some cases 1,500 years. Arab doctors, were washing their hands with vinegar 1,500 years ago before carrying out procedures. We haven't moved on terribly far from that, in our view. And in our view, quite clearly, to put together a complete infection control problem, you have to start at the beginning. You have to close the infection control loop. You have to sterilize the air. You have to clean the air before you do anything else. And I was, I'm always looking for examples. And as I stepped onto the, onto the platform today, I saw this. It's a drinking glass for drinking water. And what's on the top of it? Why is that on the top of it? That's on the top of it to prevent pathogens settling from the air into the glass. There you, have, oh, sorry, there you have a classic example of a preventative, proactive, prophylactic 
simple technology. And this little plastic circle, I'd like you to keep that in your minds as a symbol, as a representation of what Noveris does. Noveris is a preventative, prophylactic, proactive technology which prevents the transmission of pathogens through the air and the settlement of pathogens on surfaces. I have to stop doing that. So, pathogens are in the air, and I'm going to show you some evidence. By treating pathogens in the air, you do two things. You do, well, two and a half things. You remove the pathogens from the air, which are traditionally associated with airborne transmission, tuberculosis, influenza, measles, etc. You also block the, pathog the passageway of a wide range of other pathogens which can be made to become airborne. And we'll speak about some of those in a minute. Thirdly, by preventatively, proactively, prophylactically treating the air 24 hours a day, you reduce the danger, you reduce the, the, the load on surfaces, you reduce uh, pollution, uh, you reduce the bio burden on all fomites. Just like this little circle prevents pollution in that glass. And obviously, and logically, if you're continuously cleaning your environment, if you're always reducing the pollution or the bio burden on surfaces, by definition, logically, you are reducing the number of contact points and the danger of contact points for hands. It's simple, it's logic. So, pathogens are in the air. Now clearly, I'm going to talk in a moment about MRSA, for example. MRSA, they don't have little wings, they don't fly around the place, but they can be made to become airborne. We shed skin cells, we cough, we emit particles, and evidence shows that these particles will travel around environments much more, uh, much more quickly and at greater distances than previously thought. Commonplace practices, changing the beds. It's now protocol when changing a bed, not to flap the sheets around in the wind, but to carefully insert them into a bag, which is great. Except, what is an empty laundry bag full of before I put the laundry into it? A prize for the best answer. What is an empty laundry bag full of? Do I hear someone saying air? An empty laundry bag is clearly full of air before I fill it. I fill it with my laundry. Where has the air gone? It's no longer in the bag. It's in the room, taking with it some of the pathogens present in, in the laundry. So a variety of procedures put pathogens into the air. Flushing a toilet puts pathogens into the air. Changing beds puts pathogens into the air, etc. Some studies. This is a study from the University of Hong Kong, University of City uh, in London, after the SARS epidemic in 2003, specifically looking at the mechanics of transmission of particles around an environment. Now, for study purposes, this was a sealed room with no air currents. And you can see there, in a room with no air currents, um, particles remained in the air for very long periods of time. Viral particles remaining air, uh, airborne almost indefinitely. Now, the traditional view has been we clean surfaces because particles fall very quickly to surfaces and can therefore be mopped up at that point. But at this point, I have to say that we're applying the wrong branch of science to this analysis. This is not biology at this point, ladies and gentlemen, it's physics. It's not biology, it's physics. And what do I mean by that? Well, let me give you another example. I came to India on, I think, Tuesday or Monday, someday recently anyway, and I traveled to India on a very large particle which weighed well over 200 tons, almost 300 tons, and this particle stayed in the air for eight hours. And it traveled all the way from Frankfurt, Germany, to Mumbai here in India. Very large particle stayed in the air. Why did that particle stay in the air? It stayed in the air because the forces keeping it in the air were greater than the forces of gravity pulling it down. And the same thing applies to microscopic particles. If the forces keeping them in the air are greater than the force of gravity, they will stay in the air until that relationship changes. And they will travel around your facility and remain infectious in the air. All of these people, and many more research institutions besides, are recognizing the fact that many kinds of pathogens, many kinds of infections, which we did not traditionally think to be airborne, are in fact also airborne. 
influenza research showing that the tiniest particles can be, up to, can be up to nine times more infectious than traditional droplet nuclei and can stay airborne almost indefinitely. Norovirus in healthcare facilities in the United States, Johns Hopkins and other universities are saying this is now definitely shown to be also transmitted via the airborne route. Research from Canada from this year in eight different facilities, let's taking norovirus just as one example, showing uh, norovirus present in airborne samples in eight different facilities extensively throughout the, the critical uh, environments and locations uh, in those hospitals. Research from this year from Canada. Clostridium difficile, research from Leeds in 2011 using DNA fingerprinting, tracking individual spores from individual patients to different locations inside the ward, also up to high locations to high fomites where no possible traditional contact was possible. Airborne. MRSA, this is research from last year published in the Journal of Hospital Infection, showing in a large teaching hospital in Dublin and Ireland, clear evidence of MRSA, live culturable MRSA in the, uh, in the air around many locations in the hospital. You'll note there the particular vulnerability of the high dependency units. You will also note significant presence of MRSA in locations where there had never been an MRSA positive patient traveling in the air. More evidence emerging that coronavirus can remain viable in the air for longer periods of time than traditionally thought, therefore also showing the potential for this to become airborne. And many, many studies, I'm not going to dwell on these, but we have many, many studies showing direct links between airborne transmission and hospital infection rates. So, in terms of dealing with this, in terms of finding a new solution, the, the challenge with dealing with anything in the air is you must be able to kill it quickly. You have to have a technology which will react extremely quickly and which will kill very, very quickly. So the technology that we're talking about today, that I'm talking about, is plasma. Plasma is, has long been recognized as a very, very effective sterilizing medium. If you can now take it, if you can reduce it in size to small mobile units, if you can make it highly effective, if you can make it low power, low maintenance, you now have a technology which you can use in a wide variety of environments and you have a technology which will kill extremely quickly and therefore be effective in a real world environment. There's a wide body of research behind this technology. These are just some of the institutions who are involved in the research. You can see the research is spread around the world. And much independent testing, which I want to show you in a moment. I'll come back to the top one in a moment. But testing, which was done last year with the University of Huddersfield, and this is one of my central points, using Staphylococcus epidermidis as the, as the focus uh, pathogen, showed in an in vitro testing uh, a kill rate using this plasma technology of over 3,700 cubic farming, or colony farming units per cubic meter per second. That's an extremely high kill rate. And it's because the kill rate of plasma technology applied to the air is so high, is because it's effective in a real world environment. Um, some testing, I'll jump to the next slide to save time. I, this is quite small text, I'm sorry, I can show you this in more detail afterwards. But the point here was taking a wide range of, uh, of pathogens, gram-positive, gram-negative bacteria, gram-positive spores, yeast and mold spores, and viruses, in vitro, again, showing extremely high kill rates over one hour at high loading rates in the environment. This is some exciting work that's being done between ourselves and NASA, concentrating at the moment on E. coli, although we also are now working with them on Staphylococcus aureus and Aspergillus. You notice um, live E. coli uh, on, on the left prior to exposure. You notice also after traditional heat sterilization, the E. coli actually maintaining its form and remaining alive, also with ozone. Let me jump to the next slide. This is an E. coli bacteria. And I hear someone saying E. coli is not normally in the, in the air. I understand that, but for the purposes of this testing, we aerosolized it because it's easy to see and hard to kill. So this is a live E. coli bacteria after a single pass through the plasma technology, which we can show to you at the back of the room. This uh, unit is no bigger than a shoebox. Um, and that is the effect. This is a, 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 a millisecond, if you wish, 
millisecond exposure to the technology. Let me pass over that. Fundamentally, the point is people have not been cleaning the air or focused on the air to date because it has not been possible to do it quickly and effectively at low cost. That is what's now changed. That's the paradigm that's changed. It's now possible effectively to sterilize air, to do it quickly, to do it with compact units, and to do it at low cost. So some results in the real world, and I'll go through this very quickly. Um, in Budapest, the largest teaching hospital in Budapest, installation in pulmonology and COPD wards. Um, and since installation, you can see there the statement from the head, the medical director, about the reduction in pathogens, the reduction in outbreaks they've had uh, since installing the technology. Since putting it into those wards, they've now put it into dialysis and ICU, which is a great testimony of its effectiveness. Nine-month study in the Rieks Hospital at the main university hospital in uh, Copenhagen in nephrology. Uh, the Noveris in one unit and the control unit without Noveris. You can see there an interesting effect that um, the bio burden on difficult to clean surfaces, i.e. windowsills and high surfaces, was very significantly reduced. So in other words, where standard procedures weren't being used, the technology was very effective. But more important, there was a 58% 58 58 point swing, excuse me, between the control unit and the unit with the, the Novaris machines. In other words, infections year and year up 35% in the control unit, down 23% in the unit with the Novaris units. In a large multi, multi, multiple center test with Fresenius, looking at using agar plate testing, 85% reduction in bacteria, 93% reduction in VOCs, and up to 67% reduction in moles, simply by cleaning, by sterilizing the air using Novaris plasma technology. This uh, is what I want to come back to. I came back to from earlier on. This was in the UK with the National Health Service. There was a competition arranged to look for new technology to reduce nosocomial infections, and this, ours was the technology chosen. So there was a large multi-point uh, multi test done in the Royal Free Hospital in Hampstead. 8,500 air and surface samples at 21 locations around the hospital. We noted a 97% reduction in environmental MRSA. But possibly more significantly, speaking to my earlier point about if you clean the air, you're cleaning everything else, including hands, there was a 75% sustained reduction in surface contamination, simply by running low-cost plasma units. And you can imagine, then, the knock-on effect of that on hands. This is in very big letters because we're excited about it. We've been chosen by the Karolinska Institute, which, as you know, awards the Nobel Prize for Medicine every year. And starting from March, April of next year, we will be installing the technology in all of the orthopedic operating theatres in all of the major hospitals in the greater Stockholm area to attempt to have an effect on surgical site infections in orthopedics. Um, for us, it's clearly a great endorsement of the technology, and we're very excited about this cooperation. Um, in Jordan, in the specialty, a number of the private hospitals in Jordan, we've had very good results in microbiology labs, IVF labs, and operating theatres. The technology has been now working for about two years in the USA. It's in almost 400 healthcare facilities, and everywhere it goes in, we're seeing the same results. Nosocomial infections down, respiratory infections down. C. diff, looking at that specifically in a long-term care facility. Um, in a long-term geriatric hospital in Dublin, I, I cite this one because there's an interesting side effect in this one. Aside from the very, very positive effects on patients, you can see there outbreaks of MRSA, C. diff, and other conditions have disappeared uh, in three years. Individual cases presenting, yes, but outbreaks, no. But there's been a very significant knock-on effect for um, the staff. We've had an almost 50% reduction in staff sickness. Because clearly, as you're all aware, immune-suppressed patients are not only more susceptible to infections themselves, but they're also greater emitters, greater inf infectious uh, centers themselves. This, of course, also applies to children and, and, and babies who themselves are less protected by their immune systems, but who also are, are greater e emitters of, of infection of disease. So 
Finally, an exciting new develop that's coming in this year, we're adding real-time air quality monitoring to the system, uh, live sensors which will monitor the quality of the air in real time, give you readouts on your, on your smartphones and tablets, but will also control the machines so that we have a smart loop giving you data, uh, giving you information on your air quality, giving you information on the uh, potential for infection, but also controlling plasma technology to reduce the danger at the same time. My last slide, I can hear you all cheering. Just to summarize, if you apply air quality uh, technology, if you apply sterilizing technology to the air as the first point in your infection control problem, and you do it effectively, respiratory infections will go down, airborne infections will go down, all infections will go down, and you will have a general improvement in odor and VOC burdens in your facility. If you're going to do one thing to improve infections, to reduce infection rates, clearly it's important to clean hands, clearly it's important to, to clean surfaces. But if you're to do one thing which will have a very significant effect and not small incremental effects, treat your air. Treat it effectively, treat it with a technology which is low cost and which works, has been proven to work, and which will work 24 hours a day the key words being preventative, proactive, prophylactic. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Mr. McBride. Monitor, control, protect. Indeed important. An airborne infection technology is a big thing in the healthcare sector. Thanks a lot for sharing this vision.